were you shown the future at any time? Oh, you're gonna ask that one. You can um, say no, or you can. We can skip over it, or I can just not include it. But I'll share it, and then you decide. I don't want to scare anybody. That's my whole thing, okay. and I do talk about it. So I'm at a dinner party with friends who had just moved to Vancouver. I found it hard to breathe. I felt a lot of pressure in my chest. I thought, well, maybe I suddenly got sick. I didn't know what to think, to be honest with you. It got to be so bad that I ended up going to their washroom and I stood in front of the mirror and I said, Heather, if you do not get help or say you need help, you're going to die. There was a feeling that came over me about that and it was a foreboding feeling. And so I left the bathroom and I said, I need an ambulance. The music got turned down and they all looked at me and they said, what? I said, I need an ambulance. I need an ambulance right now, right now. And my fiance at the time said, no, 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 no. I'll take her to the hospital. Do you really want to go to the hospital? I said, I need an ambulance. I need an ambulance. I said, don't take me to the hospital. You don't know this area. So anyways, I don't know what, I got picked up and stuffed into the car. We're on a black highway, have no idea where he's trying to take me. That feeling just grew and grew and grew within me that I was going to die. It came to a point in time where I surrendered to it. And then all of a sudden this darkness came very slow from the back like this came over me slower and slower and slower and it was a black like you'd never seen it was pitch black but this darkness came until it was just a small tiny little hole and that's all I could see out of until that was gone now I'm in pitch blackness call it the abyss or the void because I don't know what to call it but it was it was so comfortable there even though it was pitch black pitch pitch black there was no top bottom sides left like it was just this incredible vast space it was very much like if you're ever at a lake and you're the only one there and you're just floating I didn't hear anything there was no sounds just that sensation of floating of being completely supported and very very comfortable there was no fear I had a, absolutely zero fear there was no stress I was more or less intrigued, to be honest with you. I was intrigued about what is this? What is this place? I was so curious as to how dark this really was that I had taken my hand and put it in front of my face to see if I could see my hand, and I could not. So that's how dark it was. Now, way off in the distance, I saw this tiny spark of light. It's the only thing you could see. In the whole entire vastness, the only thing that I could see, and it, it got bigger and bigger, and it seemed like it was coming towards me. And I just watched with a sense of curiosity. Well, there was really nothing else I could do. It wasn't like I could move and run or anything. I was suspended. As it's coming closer and closer, and I realized, oh, hey, wait a minute. Uh, that looks, it looks like a tunnel. Looks like a a cone even, swirling with different tones of gray and and sparks of a brighter light. And so I'm watching this and now it's getting it's closer and closer and I'm watching it, it's coming above me. But now I'm ascending upwards. I have no control over that whatsoever, but now I'm suddenly in it. And now I'm starting to get nervous because I don't know what that is, you know. I have absolutely no idea. I put my arms and legs out because I thought, well, if I could touch the sides, maybe I could stop myself from going up because I was trying to control the situation. I did not want to be out of control with this, you know? So, but it expanded on me. I definitely started to freak out a bit because that really meant I had absolutely zero control. I had absolutely zero understanding on what was happening. And I didn't know what this was. But as I'm going up and up and up and up, and I could see, because you're kind of going up and over. It's actually an up and over feeling. And I could see at the 
top of the tunnel, I guess we could call it, this extreme bright light, extreme, extreme, extreme. And then all of a sudden I was there. And so I'm like, I'm like this. Still don't know what's happening. I don't know what's going on. When I was a child and I had asked my father, well, what happens when we die, dad? And uh, he said, nothing. We live, we die, that's it. Air in the ground. That's all. And so I took that as a little kid at absolute face value. And so, you know, that's why I didn't know about any of this. If I had read books or anything, I didn't know. One time when I was invited to my cousin's Sunday school, the teacher asked me if I believed in God and I said no. And she was absolutely horrified. <laughs> wow. So anyways, I get into this bright light and I'm stunned with the brightness of it. So it was, it was like a blue white light. And within that white light are also silvers and like there's a lot of depth to that white light. It's not just a color. Then there were people. And the best way I can explain the people coming out of the light were if, if you've ever been to a football game and you know those really large lights that they all have up there. You take every single one of those lights and you put them ground level stacked on top of each other. And then people coming out of that. And I'm like, what the hell's going on here? What the hell's going on, you know? There was a massive group of people. Could have been a hundred or more. Big group of people. I'm like this. And I'm rude. Hey, I'm really rude. And I'm telling them to back the F away from me. Get the F away from me. I don't know what we're doing. Get away. You know, keep away from me. Oh, wait a minute. There's Nanny, my great grandmother. Oh, there's my great grandfather. There's my Aunt Alice and my Uncle Dick. And like, I'm noticing these people that I knew that pass. And I didn't understand that. I absolutely did not understand that. And I said, uh, I just, you know, had said to myself, I don't know what going on <laughs> where am i you know i'm sorry but i mean that's how it was i was actually quite rude and um, my great grandmother stepped towards me and oh, this always makes me tear up she said heather you have died and i was like no that can't be you know sorry um She was the one who told me, because I didn't know. That that stage was when I started to recognize the light, <laughs> you know, that incredible light. And it was loving, yes, beyond, beyond what we could imagine. Just incredible. And acceptance and support and kindness and gentleness and um I had fallen to my knees at the time and you think well where the heck am I that there's a floor <laughs> you know I mean that was that that never made sense to me where the heck am I that there's an actual floor you know but everything was was white <laughs> you know and um I had fallen to my knees and I was like sobbing Hell, I don't want to be here. I don't want to be dead. I didn't, I didn't even get to live. I didn't even get to do anything, you know? That was my main thing. I didn't get to do anything. It was just, it was too short. And then there was another energy, higher form of energy. And I could only differentiate that by a feeling. The frequency vibration itself was higher. I was told that I was going to be okay, yes, I have died, and that we immediately went to a life review. It was really fast, but it was a, it was an interesting life review uh, that I wasn't afraid of anything, and I wasn't afraid of this presence, and that's all I can explain it as is a presence. I didn't see a face or anything. Everything's telepathy. Even when my grandmother was talking to me, everything is just immediately in your head, immediately. The life review, it's as if you're so submersed in it 
it's not like watching a film or it wasn't like that for me it wasn't like watching a movie above me the signs below me i was immersed in my life in all sense of it but be well beyond the five senses well beyond that i think the most interesting thing about that that i had found uh was the understanding on how we affect one another we even when we have a thought about somebody they pick it up it's subconscious but they pick it up and they'll they'll store it you know so if you have a really harsh thought about somebody um they pick it up and they they bring it into themselves as part of their um understanding of themselves hmm. as children there was this one gal we were friends but we were always fighting with each other it was kind of one of those odd friendships we were mean to each other, but when we got along, we got along, you know? And um, there were some things that I had said to her that she took into herself as a truth. Mm. Right into her body as a truth. As I did as well. And we always were in an energy exchange between the two of us as friends. Always in an energy exchange. So... You never know on how a little bit of kindness to somebody can change their life. There were some people that I had absolutely no idea that they took it on as something that was so incredible, helpful to them, that it altered their course. Wow. You know, like, that was huge to me. Absolutely huge. I was in a group hall. And there was six of us girls. I would always say to them, you're more than your body. You're more than your body. Because unfortunately for a lot of girls, uh, they go into stripping or things like that to, you know, so they don't have much of its foundation, right? Um, this one this one girl that I was sitting and talking with and, you know, hoping that she wouldn't go in that direction, she actually didn't. So that was amazing to me. I thought, you know, it's so the life review isn't just, oh, these were harsh things that you did, you know. You're also shown wonderful things. You're shown wonderful connections you had with people, um, mm. even animals, pets, um, you know, the exchange that you have with the world around you, shown all that. But what's interesting about it is you really feel, see, sense, know, exactly how the other person felt 100 percent is so it's almost like you're a part of them but you're not you know what i mean um because we are actually so interlinked energetically we really are so then it went on to my parents and having the understanding that um chose my parents that was my soul family and that we have agreement they took agreements with me. I took agreements with them before incarnation even actually happened. But not everything is planned out because we have also free choice. I was shown about karma in the sense on how that works. And that's part of also these agreements. So I was shown other lifetimes that I had had. One of them was I killed somebody in another lifetime. Mm. And I'm being shown that. And then I'm shown the person who we had an agreement we we're going to reverse roles, not to the point of death, mind you, but some uh, really traumatic stuff, you know, and um, I was going to be the receiver. Hmm. They were going to be the doer, you know, so I was shown that as well. And so it did give me a much better understanding as to why some of the things had occurred that just seemed out of left field for me. I learned all about energy and the human body because this is what I was going to come back with. So I was shown in, um, in lightning speed. It's like, it's just there. All the information is just there very, very, very quickly and flashed in front of you. This is how it works it's just real quick. And so how the human body works on an energetic level, what we take in, what we put out, how it moves within the body, all about the auric field, all about energy points and how emotions work and how unprocessed emotions affect the physical body. 
brains are so incredibly, so incredibly powerful. We can hinder ourselves or not. We can make things better within ourselves. What we direct out there is a frequency and that frequency we can also invite. So depending upon if a lower level frequency, higher level frequency, how to move energy, how to pull in energy. It's almost like using the body as filing cabinet, you know? Oh, I'm going to stick this file and I'm going to put it over here, you know, or in my lower back or because I don't have, I don't have the luxury right now to deal with that. And so we file it and put it away. I also went to the Crystal City, which was immensely beautiful. It would be kind of like um, I was 15 miles, 20 miles out. And I wasn't there very long. Somebody came to meet me. I didn't get to see their face or anything. I didn't. I just knew it was a, a body and somebody who really liked me because they gave me a great big hug. Basically, it's not my time to be home. So I was like, oh, okay. And then gone, immediately gone from there. I was shown the place of healing for souls who have done their, their lifetime. And sometimes lifetimes can be really traumatic. And we go to a place of healing. There's healing pools. There's water, healing water which is incredible as well. Yeah, oh, and everything's marble. Everything was marble. White marble. It was quite interesting, actually. Columns. There was columns. Some souls can be there for quite some time. Not that there's time as to how we understand it, of course. Some could be there for a very, very long time, depending upon the life experience that they had. And there was the Hall of Records. I called them the Hall of Records because, I mean, at that time, that was the language that I used. And I understand that everybody calls it a Catholic Records. It's fine. It doesn't really matter what we call it. The books are as, as high up as you could possibly imagine. And I was shown my book. My book. Well, I obviously had a lot of lifetimes because it was pretty thick, you know, so I had, uh, I've been around quite a bit of times. Um, and within that, there was uh, like a little running bee, you know, obviously of this lifetime, which I found odd and strange, you know, and then of course when Harry Potter came out, I thought, did they talk to some people who had NDEs and maybe had looked at their book, you know, so I thought that was kind of interesting when I watched Harry Potter many years later. What I was also shown was on a soul level, not all souls are kind of in the same place. So if you've got a soul vibration on, let's say, a level three, well, they're not going to be in the same soul understanding vibration as somebody sitting at five or six frequency. So it, it it's interesting that kind of like was with like. There's many different levels, many different levels. There's a place that you do go when you have mentors where you are working out your life agreement. There's also a cosmic board. Is it the same as what people are talking about nowadays? Is the Federation? No, it's not. Different. What would I liken it to? Not quite a government system, um, but they're there to, to talk with you, to also help you and others. And they're, they're from multi-dimensions. And it's hard to wrap one's head around that. I totally get that. You know, I was surprised as well. But nothing shocked me. It's like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I know all this. Oh, yeah, I know this all from this side, you know. Because um, we, when we incarnate, um, everything's wiped clean. Some of them were just pure light. In human just form or like in a, in a form or like just a, like a ball of light? Like a no. ball of light, a ball of light that would kind of change colors from pinks to whites to maybe very, very pale blues. Others, I could actually see their faces, really. Some of them had a white cloak. There was one specifically that it was blue, a blue cloak. 
when you're there, you just, you know that they're from other galaxy, other dimension, and they all come together. They're extremely wise. Some of them, I guess we would call them like, maybe they look like ETs, you know? Yep, definitely. <laughs> I would definitely say that, but I can't say that I could really see the face of every single one of them. I could not. It was a long table and they were all sitting around it and that area was illuminated but anything around that was black oh okay why well, know exactly where we were for that but there were also time periods being shown modes of travel which i haven't really spoken about before i at the time called them uh wormholes hmm. i went through a couple of them they were showing them to me it was flashes of color, like a two, and it was extraordinarily fast. I felt it was kind of a bumpy ride, but I don't know why I felt that way, but it seemed that way to me, you know, um, but it's modes of transportation to get one place to the other, uh, but not for everybody. Others could just imagine it in their mind and then they're there. So it's not for everybody. So I didn't know how that worked really. Like a like almost like a portal that just opened up in space and you went through it? Or was it just yeah. always stationary off to the side and you kind of walked to it? You, you could just travel through it. It would just okay. suddenly be there. You travel through it. It was really interesting. And is that how you got from like the Crystal City to the healing place? No, and, the Crystal was it... City was that. Okay. It was immediate. I always like to ask people, how real was it? Could it have been a dream? Oh gosh, no. It Even light? does not feel as real as that you sense more you know more you your senses are so highlighted here everything's kind of dimmed down right it's more dim you know whereas on the that experience what a blank wow and now i feel alive now i'm alive i i what was i doing before obviously i didn't feel like i was living a dream and so almost like two-dimensional in a sense you know absolutely no way no way no i i have met a lot of people like my family was not into hearing about this i'll tell you that right now they were not supporters of it because of course that was their belief structure right i never did push it or anything but um it was definitely uh, a lonely journey at the time were you shown the future at any time? Oh, you're going to ask that one. You can um, say no, or you can, we can skip over it, or I can just not include it, but... I'll share it, and then you decide. I don't want to scare anybody. That's my whole thing, okay. and I do talk about it. I was sitting in some kind of chair of some kind, and there were golden balls about this big, so much bigger than a basketball. And I was sitting and it would come in front of me and it would open up and there would be a movie in there. It was the start of mankind in warring. Wars. Murdering each other all through the Earth's history. One after the next, one after the next. And it just kept going. It was actually... Um, the level of trauma was huge. <laughs> Absolutely huge. Death, death, death. Um, lots of fires and lots of um, death from water, flooding, um, what we now call tsunamis even. There was lots of protests that they were coming more into our world today. Um, definitely saw all the wars. All the wars. I mean, it was just absolutely excruciating to watch. Uh, yeah. Bad. Um, a lot of unrest in our world. A lot of unrest. Um, people... Just take a minute. <laughs> Desperate to be heard. Seen. Um desperate to be um, as much as a priority as anybody else and um, marches 
and um, anger, lots of anger, lots and lots and lots of anger. Um, and it's all kind of where we are right now. <laughs> we, we've got to shed, we've got to shed our beliefs about other cultures, our beliefs about other people to get to get through where we need to go. I'll leave it there because I find it terribly sad. Lots of civil wars, all all dotted all over. Unfortunately, yeah. So you're lots of starvation. I, I yeah. had I actually I had asked them to stop. I asked them to stop. I I, I couldn't bear anymore. What was the point of it? Do you think? Just yeah. What was the point of it? Well, I was thinking that maybe if I didn't ask them to stop, maybe I was going to get to the good stuff. <laughs> oh. But I couldn't bear to see any more of it, like the, 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 the death, the children, these, all of it. I could, I couldn't, couldn't. But why did it start? Like, why did that happen to begin with? It like, was why did... for me to have the understanding of, um, unfortunately, what we do to one another, oh. and over what it is, and it could be over religion, it could be over. It, it, it can be over land. It can be over crops. It can be, it can be over anything. Without the understanding that we're all here for the same purpose, we're all we're all here as brothers and sisters. I was not actually going to come back, and I had dated, well, through crying <laughs> basically, and in in disbelief that I was dead. That I, you know, I didn't have a chance to really start. And I didn't have a chance to do the things that I came here to do and that I wanted to go back and I, I wanted to do the work that I I set out to do uh, in regards to my life contract. I was told coming back was going to be far more difficult than before I died. On a physical, emotional, mental, psychological level, it was all going to be extraordinarily painful. And there were things that Physically, I wasn't going to be able to heal, and I was going to live with that pain. So I was to be prepared for that. Then I was asked again, do you want to come back? No, yes, no. I do. Because that, when I was over on the other side, I firmly believed that I could do a lot of that work. We're connected to each other. I think if we, if we could just have that understanding, how connected we are to one another and and, and let go of all our, our false beliefs of one another and really have that understanding that we are energetically a part of each other at all time. We're all human, period. You don't have to have all these divisions and everything that have been created. I think if my wish could be anything, if we could just get to that understanding. How do people find out more about you? I'm on Instagram at got underscore insight. I work with people one-on-one. -on -one. I've been doing that since the 90s. <laughs> I do energy readings because I see energy all the time. It was one of the things I came back with. I teach people in everything that I learned on the other side and how to work with energy. That's what I teach and I give them tools so they don't have to keep coming to people like me to learn how to do the work for themselves. So this video is brought to you by Audio Cardio. Audio Cardio is an app that I've been using the past few months that's scientifically proven to enhance hearing and alleviate tinnitus. I really like it. I've been enjoying it. So I wanted to share it with you. If you want to learn more, you can click on the link in the description. And if you like saving money, you can save 20% by using promo code OAKS20. All right. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.